Now let's look at completing the square. This is going to lead into MATLAB 3B because um, as, as we've seen a couple of times already, often the form that our function is given in is not easy to turn into vert, which makes it far more difficult to sketch the graph. So for instance, if I gave you this one and I said, hey, where's the vertex? It would be nice if we could say, well, hey, what's this factor into? But it doesn't factor. So this isn't one that we can use our good old Foundations 10 skills on. Instead, we're going to learn something brand new called completing the square. We need to complete this so that we can find and turn it into something squared and pull out those P and Q values. To do that, the first thing you have to look at is, is there anything in front of the X squared? Is A anything other than 1? And no, it's not. If A is just 1, you start by drawing a bracket, put down your first term, Put down your second term, leave some space, close your bracket, and let your constant sit out there. So we know that. And, that, and I've done nothing to it other than rearrange it and make some room to do the next steps. Now you're going to take B, what we, we, um, I'm referring to B from this standard form of the equation, right? There's our b value. Take the coefficient of x and you're going to take half of that and square it. Half of 8 is 4 and I'm literally just going to go, I'm going to add 4 squared in there. Now maintaining equality as we work through the completing the square process is really, really important. So if I add it, I also have to subtract it like that. And now if I add something on and subtract it, the equation hasn't changed in value. It's only changed in appearance. And let me get rid of all this. And now if you've done it right, if you were to factor this, you're going to find out that you get x plus half of that 8, close your bracket, squared. If I took x plus 4 times x plus 4, I would get back to that trinomial. On the outside, you've got to apply some, some good order of operations and some integers. 4 squared is 16. So out here, I'm going to have minus 5. Interesting thing to note. I've had a few of you, or a few students say, hey, would you look this over and make sure I did it right? If you're wanting to check you're completing the square, expand it back out. We know x plus 4 squared means x plus 4 times x plus 4. and it should match. If you are going to do a check on something you're handing in to me, as soon as you switch to your check process, make sure you tell me, hey, I'm checking it. And if you really, really want to make me happy, help me see what I'm looking at as your answer. Okay, because otherwise I'm going to work my way down and I'm going to think this is where I'm, what I'm supposed to grade. And that's not what I'm looking for for an answer. Most of these questions are going to ask you things like, what's the vertex? Complete the square to find the vertex, for instance. And we could do that from here. We know our vertex is negative 4, negative 5. Oops. Which we could sketch. We know it opens up. Let's do another one because, of course, some of these get a lot messier than that. What if? There's my quadratic function, and I want you to tell me where, what the vertex is. Obviously, um, I can play around with factoring it, and it might factor. If you're good at factoring and that's a quick thing to try, go for it. Otherwise, we can complete the square. Now, how is this one different? Remember I said as long as the a value is 1, it's easy. Our a value is 2. Now, that doesn't mean it's hard. It's just harder. Our a value is going to sit in front of that bracket. Inside, we do exactly what we did before with x squared. Now realize, I'm dividing this 2 out to get it in front of the brackets. Okay? If I put the 2 back in, I get my 2x squared. And that's important. So now when I go over here, this has to be what I would multiply 2 by to get to the 8x. And the math is, what's 8 divided by 2? Well, it's 4. 
And again, I'm going to close my brackets and I'm going to leave my plus 11 sit here. If I distributed the two back into the bracket and tidied this up, I would get back where I started. It's exactly equal to that same thing, which is really important that I maintain that. Now, according to the process, we take half of this and square it. Half of four is two and squared, and I add it here. And outside, I need to subtract the same value. The catch is, this is inside of brackets, times another two, right? And I have to balance all of that on the outside. We know that this is four. I have to do this to it to find out what I'm going to subtract. And again, if you're going, oh crap, I think I might have messed that up. Instead of going, oh, well, I'll just keep going. Grab some scrap paper, multiply it out, collect like terms. Make sure that you get back to that starting point if you want to make sure. Then this trinomial is going to factor. X, we're going to put an X, half of this, and your brackets in all squared. Sort out the integers on the outside. There is exactly the same function rewritten in vertex form. My vertex is negative 2, 3. We know it opens up, so we could sketch this super easy. I know that my domain is that x is an element of the real numbers. And if you haven't realized by now, that's for just a function where we're working with it, that's always true until you get into word problems where you have to think about, hey, the width of this board can't be a negative, those sorts of things. That's a great start always for your domain. My range, since this opens up, that means it has a minimum value because it has a bottom. That means my range values are greater than or equal to three. Three is the minimum, three is the smallest. Every, all of the rest of the y values are bigger and they are all real numbers. Okay, let's see how much messier we can make it. Let's go. Because, of course, fractions are numbers too. There's a quadratic function. What's the vertex? Well, we need it in vertex form. And if we follow the pattern from the previous one, the one half is going to just come in front of the brackets. I'm going to have to do some work in there, and I know the plus three is out here. Now let's talk about the work. I have an eight in here, and I'm going to multiply half times something to get eight. And to find that something, really what I'm doing is taking eight and dividing it by a half. Not in half, dividing it by a half. How many halves are in eight? There's 16 of them. And there's the number that goes there. And if you think about it, if I distribute that half in, when it hits the 16, I'm going to get 8. But it's always this number divided by the one that you're putting out in front. Now, half of 16 is 8 squared. It's going to go there. Out here, I need to subtract half of 8 squared. And now I have a half sitting in front, x plus half of that 16, close my brackets and square it. And on the outside, this is 64. Half of it makes 32. So my vertex is at negative 8 negative 29. Let's talk about this half for a second. Half is still a positive value. I know this parabola opens up. I know that it has a minimum at a y value of negative 29. I know my range would be y is greater than or equal to negative 29. But this half is pretty small. Half is close to zero. So if I were going to sketch this, I know negative 8, negative 29 is way down there somewhere. But I know that this is a very wide 
parabola because of how much closer a half is to zero than other numbers, right? So um, that A value gives us that orientation and the general width of our parabola. And I think, let me scan for a second, but that should get you pretty good through MATLAB 3B.